you fail to understand, then the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Mitch Brisker, and for most of my adult life, for those of you who don't know me, I was inv involved in Scientology. Uh, for about 30 of those years, I worked with the church, produce, uh, directing films, instructional films, propaganda films, designing exhibitions, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I left a few years ago, actually in the wake of the pandemic, I left, as did, I believe, a whole lot of other people. I wrote a book, uh, called Scientology the Big Lie, How I Made an Evil Cult Look Good. I hope you'll check it out. It's on Amazon, it's on Apple Books, it's on Google Books, and you can order it in bookstores in case you don't have a computer. But if you don't have a computer, you're not watching this. If you're here live, as I see a number of you are, I really appreciate you coming here today. If you're watching this on the replay uh, and you've never been here before, I invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can always cancel that later. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just checking the chat to make sure that uh, I'm not saying any comments about my, you know, that's the thing about doing the solo. You can't really do a mic check. There's nobody to really check it. Uh, so anyway, the subject, today we're gonna talk about, this is not headline news, folks, but this is really important to know in terms of understanding the dangerous cult of Scientology. Hubbard was a QAnon level conspiracy theorist uh, to, a, to a level that I, I don't think a lot of people outside of Scientology understand because Scientologists make a really good show of what they call safe pointing different government agencies and so forth. But internally, they are indoctrinated to hate the government and they absolutely hate the government. They're, in doc they're, they're, they're uh, admonished to pay their taxes and, uh, you know, and, and abide by the law. Uh, and when they don't, if it's a big thing, they get protected. Uh, but I, uh, today we're gonna, I made a, a film really that I'm kind of just gathering my thoughts here. I produced, I directed a propaganda film uh, based on, a, on an essay written by Hubbard. Uh, <clears throat> And it really expresses his hatred for the government. And I'm not saying our government is perfect, but you know, we do, and he has a right to speak out and say he hates it. But we, we are able to, to hold our leaders accountable to some degree. Uh, we do have freedom of religion and freedom to leave a religion without being interfered with, which is something that the Church, church of Scientology uh, violates constantly. But First, before we look at the film, I want to just set up for you. I just, I have to just open a couple of things up. First thing I want to do is I want to set up for you just how hate, hateful and conspiratorially minded Hubbard was. And to do that, I want to read you a page and a half from my book. I don't like reading online, but I'm, I'm going to do this. So here it goes. This is basically one of the more academic sections of my book. Uh, it's Believe me, it's not, it's not all like this, but a lot of it's much more exciting. Uh, but this does paint a really good picture of Hubbard's mindset, and it's pretty unbelievable. And so I'm gonna read this to you. I'm gonna scroll it on the screen, you can follow along. <clears throat> and it says, within the Scientology universe, there is no shortage of beliefs and conspiracies driven by prolific foes intent on keeping humankind enslaved. It was the Markab Confederacy, which Hubbard described as consisting of various planets united into a very vast civilization, which has come forward up through the last 200,000 years, formed out of the fragments of earlier civilizations. In the last 10,000 years, they have gone on with a sort of decadent, kicked in the head civilization that contains automobiles, business suits, fedora hats, I don't know what he had against Fedora has, but he really seemed to dislike them. Uh, telephone, spaceships, a civilization which looks almost like an exact duplicate, but is worse off than the current US civilization. Hubbard claimed the Markabs are one of the most powerful galactic civilizations still, alive, still active. 
in a lecture titled Auditing Calm Cycles, and that would be uh, the, the, the type of communication which is required to practice Scientology, they refer to that as an auditing calm cycle. You might have seen uh, Mark Haley and I just did a breakdown of a film we made called The Cycle of Communication, and I, I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, but if you want to know all about everything you don't need to know about communication, it's, I think we made a quite, uh, a quite entertaining video on that. But anyway, so he gave this briefing uh, on what is called the St. Hill Special Briefing Course, which was a higher level auditing course. It was always considered a very important course. This is a bit of an aside. Hubbard referred to the auditors who'd taken that course as the Dukes of Scientology. That course uh, is, hasn't been around for years. Miscavige canceled it. He said he's up, updating all the materials for it, which is, generally speaking, the way he resells things and keeps the whole, the whole uh, you know, scam going. So anyway, he's giving this lecture. And in that lecture, in 1963, he says, it was the Marcaps who invented in income tax as a punishment. Uh, kind of a nice statement for somebody who wants tax exemption. Uh, then there are other conspiracies involving a handful of families, the Rockefeller family being prominent among them, that Hubbard claims, uh, that Hubbard claims for the, these groups that Hubbard claim forms a secret cabal that coordinates, I'm sorry, a secret cabal that controls all banking on earth. Then there's Smirsch, comically named after an actual Russian counterintelligence operation originally coined by Bolshevik party chief Vladimir Lenin, implemented during the reign of Joseph Stalin and later featured as a nemesis in Ian Fleming's early James Bond novels. So according to Hubbard, all the world's governments have been taken over by Smirsch and they are controlling the world through psychiatry. Hubbard proposed to defeat the alleged Smirch infiltration by smuggling Sea Org members into Switzerland, taking over the World Federation of Mental Health in Geneva, and then discrediting psychiatry by using the organization to promote eugenics and mass euthanasia to the United Nations. The plan was abandoned after the Swiss Federal Office of Public Health caught wind of it. And last but not least, there was psychiatry itself, seen by Scientology as a monolithic organization funded by governments and big pharma with plans to rule the world and enslave mankind. So uh, if you had any doubt about the, 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 the role of conspiracies within the Scientology universe and within the teachings of Hubbard, there it is. So uh, let me bring this film up. I want, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at another film. It's it's, kind of, it's probably only eight minutes long. So, uh, and essentially, this film is called "Unconstitutional Government." Hubbard hated the U.S. Constitution, so we're gonna settle in for about eight minutes. And if you want to run and grab some popcorn or use the toilet or anything, I'm gonna say hi to a few people, and then we'll get started on it. Uh, I'm gonna go back up to the top here. So we got April in Amsterdam. Hey, welcome back, April. My mic is uh, blowing, okay, it's leaving. Uh, from Holland, great to see you. Peggy P, hi Mitch Brisker. Uh, I should put these up actually, sorry about that. Uh, then I've got Peggy P, hey Peggy, how you doing? Uh, I'm so enjoying you and your content. So glad you're back in the saddle. Yeah, I'm kind of playing hooky from recording my book because it's really, a way more stressful than I thought, and so you know, this is um, this is how I pay hooky. So uh, we've got Left Food Kitchen. Looking forward to more insights from the Mitchster. Yeah, that's uh, Mitch rhymes with bitch, rhymes with switch, rhymes with ditch. I get a lot of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Hi to you too, and April. And so hey, Peggy. Okay, so you guys have your your. Uh, okay, this is Barb tries. Hey, Barb, uh, from Durham, North Carolina. And uh, oh, Shelly's back. Nice to see you, Shelly. Oh, sound is good. Thanks for following through on that. Uh, philosophy. Morning, Mitch. Yeah, hi. So you're. Uh, it's not morning here, my dear. It's two in the afternoon. So that's what happens when you're in different, different
different parts of the world. And uh, so here's from Rune Sky City, Esoteric COB Art to See, greeting from Target 3. I'm so glad you made it all the way to Target 3. Uh, give us a report sometime. Who else is up there? So we're going to go along here. So I've just get, given everybody a chance to settle in because uh, I don't think, yeah, maybe Shelly. Maybe uh, Shelly says Illerich sounds very bipolar. I think so in the terms of I, I from what I, I didn't, I never met him uh, personally, but it seems from reading him and, and being in his environments that he created and, and, and working with people that he had a great influence on, it seemed that he did have times of uh, manic episodes where he wrote for days and days and days, and then periods of depression where he did God knows what. Uh... <laughs> philosophy. Okay, he's not wrong about the banking system. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. I think there's absolutely some some uh, uh, some sort of hidden cabals or hidden conspiracies on planet Earth to control banking, manipulate finances, blah, blah, blah. But Hubbard framed all these as enemies of Scientology. So he really tried to take advantage of those conspiracies. Uh, but yes, I, I don't disagree with you, philosophy. Yeah, you know, that's true. LeFou Kitchen says, isn't one of the most famous photos of young Hubbard, one of him wearing a fedora? Maybe it's a different kind, but it certainly looks like one. Yeah, I mean, maybe somebody insulted his hat, and so he decided that the hat just became like an enemy hat. That sounds like something he would do. He also, uh, I've also read stuff about the Markabians, they also liked, uh, I think it was the Markabs, it might have been some other, one of his many uh, alien, uh, you know, civilizations that are plaguing Earth. They were bowler hats. So I think those are the two kinds of hats he didn't like. Uh, hello, Auntie Harju. Say what you will about Hubbard, but he had quite an imagination. Yeah, this is no doubt. You know, I remember reading Lawrence Wright's book. And, you know, he really does give uh, Hubbard credit for being so prolific. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, what are we talking about really? You know, Mussolini made the trains run on time. I mean, bad people, they all sort of have a way to do something. Uh, so philosophy. L. Ron Hubbard wanted to promote eugenics. That's interesting. Yeah, it's not, it's not that he wanted to promote it, although he was a racist. Uh, it's that he knew it was bad, and then he thought if he created, if he created a f uh, like a fake, uh, like if he got people into the World Federation of Health, and they promoted eugenics as though you know like like double agents like cutouts uh, proposing that that it would bring them down. So he definitely knew that it was bad, but I'm sure secretly, he because he was such a, you know, he went to Rhodesia and he just like cozied up with the apartheid government and you know Zimbabwe was formerly Rhodesia and he, he just like he wrote a constitution for them and presented it to them he said here me L. Ron Hubbard I, here I give you my new constitution it'll help your country there was nothing in it about giving more rights to the black population so uh, and that they still threw him out of the country because they hated the guy uh, philosophy says Mitch that sounded like all the conspiracies all together. Yeah, it does. it's like he kind of made this rich protein stew of conspiracies and then got everybody, all of his followers to eat it. I mean, I used to work with guys at Gold, you know, old timers who'd been on the ship, they'd been with Hover Forever. And they used to talk about these things. Oh yeah, I remember Ron coming by one day and saying, you know, the government does this all wrong and this is the way to do it. And this is who really runs the planet. And they all believe that we're constantly visited by aliens and all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not saying any of that's true or not. I'm not a proponent of it. I'm just saying it's so uh, prevalent in Scientology and it's so much a part of the mindset. Yeah, this is really the point of why I wanna show the film today. Uh, Barb Tri says, hates the constitution, but they sure have found a way to abuse the first amendment. Yeah, they 100% hide behind the First Amendment in two ways. They, uh, they, they receive religious freedoms, uh, the, the, the lack of uh, the scrutiny that, is de that the government cannot penetrate uh, religious uh, organizations. And then also, which a lot of people don't really talk about, but the First Amendment, religious freedom, 
uh, also means the freedom to leave a religion without being interfered with by the government or the religion. And so uh, we all know, I mean, I don't have to tell you stories about how Scientology um, interferes with people trying to leave. They even have them sign contracts that they can't sue them, that they have to come back and do arbitration and all this kind of crazy stuff. All of that is a violation of the First Amendment. You have the, the, the constitutional right to say, I'm not part of this religion anymore. I'm leaving and to have nobody interfere with you. And that, that's absolutely, uh, absolutely a problem. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay, Carolyn, uh, we're a uh, ha, 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 ha. My surname before marriage was Pitch. So you can imagine what I got. Huh? Yeah, you know, my parents didn't think about, you know, I thought about when I had kids, I, I named my kids things that didn't rhyme with anything bad, and I did it on purpose. Uh, so yeah, because kids can be really mean. So yeah, yeah, Mitch Pitch. That could have been. I could if I had your name. That would have been even more difficult. But yes, I can't imagine. Uh, let me get this one off of there. Okay, we're gonna get to the film. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. Well, this is interesting. Philosophy says, Mitch, I have an old book written by Richard DeMille who helped L. Ron write early Scientology. He was the son of Cecil B. DeMille. Well, I didn't know more about that. I've been meaning to contact you about that other issue anyway, so I'm gonna send you an email. I wanna know more about that. That's, that's, I'm sure that's a known thing. It's just not on my radar. Uh, Rev Girl says, I've been tweaking this recipe for years. It's good. Um, I don't know what recipe you're talking about. Uh, I must, oh, yeah, it's for, I get it earlier. Okay, Rev Girl, Auntie thinks my mushroom soup is especially delicious. Only a few get some. I love mushroom soup, by the way. It's, you know, you guys are not going to push me into, into morphing this into a cooking channel, okay? So I'm not going to answer any more of your 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 interpersonal food uh chat okay it's not going to happen okay going on let me see if there's anything I wanna, uh, uh. oh nice nice carolyn rostika says i'll be watching later on replay i have to go now as we're taking the kids to the theater to see alice in wonderland how nice have a wonderful day okay so we're going to jump into the film uh, <clears throat> enough small talk i really appreciate you guys being here <clears throat> we're going to jump into this film okay so this film was an essay um i forgot to get the date of the original essay i'm guessing it was in the 70s i'm guessing and, and it was a time when hubbard was writing these essays under the banner of uh like a newsletter called freedom which later became freedom magazine which they've been unable to publish since 2018 or 19 was the last uh, last copy of freedom uh, so this kind of journalism has always been really important to scientology it's the reason they started scientology media productions and the reason miscavige spent a hundred million dollars on a broadcast facility because he wanted to take this kind of journalism which is this fake in the public interest journalism he wanted to put it on tv for some reason he uh for some reason he 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 chickened out he never did it and instead he did a station which is like the shopping channel it's just nothing but puff pieces and pr and wait a minute i gotta put this up here rune uh, skysting says i found a book on amazon named how trump rescued scientology from the deep state written by an author that goes by the name of andreas mb gross sounds really conspiratorial it sounds like it was written for clicks because it has you know it has the name trump it has deep state it has rescued it has scientology i think the person who wrote it was just hoping to sell uh books on uh, on hot tags okay so here we go so we're without further ado i'm going to start this film it's done under the banner of freedom uh, the article was probably written in the 70s. The film was produced, I would say, 2017, 2018, maybe. Uh, and um, I'm just going to kind of 
bite my cheek because it's it's actually not hard it's actually not easy for me to watch these things so here it goes that's why i'm delaying and humming and hawing. here we go let me know if the sounds okay if it's uh if it's not loud enough The existence of a constitution does not guarantee a people a constitutional government. Written or unwritten, constitutions usually set up the form of the government and guarantee the people certain rights. Governments usually formulate them and point to them as evidence of their liberality. Often, to gain popular support, they add to them very worthwhile bills of rights, guaranteeing individual freedom, trial by jury, confrontation of one's accusers, freedom of religion and speech, and other desirable features. But the end product is a con game of wonderful scope. The elected and appointed members of the government and their employees are all found to be above the law. They are not compelled in any real way to act within the Constitution or a Bill of Rights. The government's departments and bureaus routinely act completely without regard to the Constitution. In the U.S., the Supreme Court exists to reverse government unconstitutionality. But one seldom reaches it with a case. Unless one has tens of thousands of dollars for legal fees. And even when one wins a Supreme Court decision, the government employee or bureau whose unconstitutional actions caused the trouble in the first place goes unpunished and unscathed. Almost all the trouble in a country is the government, through its employees, acting in a thoroughly unconstitutional fashion. This reacts on the public as a disbelief in the actual government and a disavowal of it. As the government employees, elected or appointed, do not act within the framework of the Constitution, the public thinks of them as frauds or conquerors and alien. Revolutionary groups spring up. Any foreign enemy finds adherents. Criminals are protected by the public. No one goes near the police. And the final product is at best a revolt. And at worst, the death of a civilization. The government public servant is supposed to act of, for, and by the people in a democracy. But the public sees in him someone peculiarly exempt from law and a servant of only special interest groups. The aspect of a government mouthing the Constitution and yet acting as a Superman cast undermines patriotism by defying belief. The public reacts to this untruth 
with defiance. More and more force is needed to control the population. And at last, there is a revolt or the nation degenerates and dies. As the public cannot strike at the government individual who is acting in an unconstitutional manner, it strikes at the whole government. Sir, you've been rejected. No government can afford even one tyrannous petty clerk, much less unconstitutional behavior You're rejected. in all its departments. Next. Next. In America, the people are fond of the constitutional freedoms promised by the Founding Fathers. Yet the existing government, in all its executive departments, spits on the Bill of Rights a thousand times a day. And executive orders defy them in an avalanche. These departments are actively at war with religion, freedom of speech, and ordinary legal procedures to a degree that observing the Bill of Rights is a remarkable exception to their normal conduct. The courts will accept no complaints or summonses for these public servants. They cannot be sued. There is no crime which they cannot commit with complete personal safety. And they control the bayonets and full force of the state and use it to serve themselves and their friends. In gathering case histories of the unconstitutional conduct of these agencies, one is overwhelmed with the volume of instances and feels the futility of even beginning to list them. At state and county level, abuses of power and violations of rights are so flagrant that few voices indeed dare raise themselves in protest. National and state, county, and city laws reviewed against the Constitution present a spectacle of studied defiance. Illegal seizures of persons and property, detention without trial, are the common routine of officials. Yet they wonder that the public does not support them actively but tends to withdraw in fear. When a public is faced with unconstitutional officials, it becomes insecure. When the insecurity becomes high enough, they join any revolutionary force. When further oppression is leveled at them, they revolt. The common answer of one of these governments is money handouts in an effort to buy support. It does not work. Trying to remove all leaders or active people from the population by some unholy alliance with psychiatry not only does not work, it accelerates the downfall of the state, involving as it does even more flagrant rights violations. So many empires and nations have gone this route. Rome, 
France, Tsarist Russia, Germany, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, etc., 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 etc. And so many are furiously floundering down the same path that it is a wonder that men in government have not spotted their trouble. The vast majority of government employees are honest, decent people. But they are compelled, rejected, often against their will, to act unconstitutionally by some of their leaders or fellow employees who flout the rules of decency in the name of the state. Perhaps the taste of tyranny is so delicious and the sadism of despotism is such an addiction that even if they knew their lives depended utterly on becoming bound by and acting according to their constitutions and bills of rights, they still could not forego it. The dope addict may know his vice is killing him, yet he cannot end it. Possibly this is the case in unconstitutional bureaucracy. Men go quite mad with power. And madmen commit suicide easily. In fact, they never do anything else. One wonders rather sadly why these fellows insist on committing suicide so expensively. But democracy, republics, even monarchies will go on decaying and dying and killing the rest of us until the government official is forced to act in all his acts within the framework of the Constitution and all guarantees of individual rights. One cannot perpetuate the monstrous untruth of a constitution and bill of rights guaranteeing security and liberty while the most powerful class in the land is super law and is in no way bound by it. Okay, great. Um... Yeah, I got to tell you, I get actually kind of triggered watching these things because there's so much stuff in it that is absolute BS. I mean, sure, there's problems. Uh, it, it, this film points out the, the, the existence of some violations of, of, of uh, uh, civil rights and so on and so forth and individual rights. And there are problems and, you know, and, uh, we do have mechanisms in place to try to right those. But... This whole thing is a mask. This is essentially what you've just seen is a heavily fascist organization that's accusing the United States of not being more democratic. In other words, of violating its own tenets like the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's absolutely amazing. This is how the brainwashing takes place. I mean, I look at these things and I'm like, I just cringe. And when I see comments, people say, hey, this really looks great, but blah, 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 blah. And I think, oh, my God, that I was doing this stuff. I mean, I'm still working out, like, what part of me was so corruptible uh, that I could just read this thing, you know, uh, so much of it which violated my own sense of what I believe society was all about. Uh, anyway, I could go on and on and on and on and about that, but it's like, you know, I, I am trying to hold myself accountable by raising people's awareness about how dangerous Scientology is. Um, I think everybody who's speaking out on Scientology uh, really needs to, at one point, step forward and say, 
yeah, I was raised in it, or yeah, I, I, I joined it by choice, but like we all did things, you know, I wasn't an abusive person in Scientology, but I, I helped create materials that, that uh, enabled a con game that made Scientology look good. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I, I don't want to, so like, I want everybody in the chat to say, we forgive you, Mitch. <laughs> no, I'm just joking about that. Uh, I have to put this up here. Uh, philosophy said, I remember hearing that effective propaganda should have 70% truth and 30% lies. I mean, there you go. That's probably a, about the correct number. Uh, I couldn't tell you how much I agree with that. Uh, I have some, st I start some as we were going through it. I like to bring these up. Uh, Auntie Harsh, you said, it's quite hilarious when Scientology talks about freedom of thought or speech like that, even uh, like it. Uh, like that even plays a part in it. Yeah, it's again, this is Scientology's mask. This is the mask that it puts up. This, as I said, th this is from, it's, uh, I think actually, um, I think Rev Girl asked, asked earlier where this came from. It was an article written by L. Ron Hubbard. It was produced, I believe, in 2017, 2018. I made this film. Um, I made it up at Goldner Productions for the, the TV network, so it was shown on the network. Uh, it's there. You can go watch it. Uh, but, you know, I, I'd rather you watch it here because that way it benefits me in, 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 in my quest to hold them accountable. So because uh, and you can't comment on their platform. You can comment all you want here. Uh, so uh, let me see what let me just go through a few other of these. Yeah, I get I really get thrown off balance when I watch this thing because I'm like, oh my god, I, you know, it's like, on the one hand, you feel good for for crafting something uh, that's high quality, but then on the other hand, it's just shiny. It's a shiny object to try to attract agreement in people's minds, and that's just a terrible thing. Uh, so, Red Girl, I, I think I answered your question. When was the uh, the movie made and what's his source. Yeah, the source is a Freedom article prior to Freedom Magazine. Uh, yeah, so it was not from in a policy or it was not from a technical bulletin. It was not from, it was, for, Hubbard used to write these essays that were sort of <clears throat> like his social work. They were like, he'd write an essay about society. He'd write an essay about the role of religion in society or you know, constitutionality or good people versus, you know, he'd write these articles and publish them and they were supposed to be kind of a benefit of, uh, a benefit of him, you know, being around because he was a commentator that was supposed to help everybody. Uh, so this, Wexican Messler says, I kind of wish it was Ron's wacky ass voice narration. Yeah, that would be really funny. <clears throat> Lord knows I've heard enough of that. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, yeah, so philosophy asks, I think maybe we've come to an understanding of this now. This is an earlier comment. So does Ron support the Constitution? I'm confused. He supports the Constitution when it be benefits him and his organization. But essentially, it, it is a piece of paper that was... Uh, that came from the mind of man, the mind of, and, and, and Hubbard considered basic humans to be subhuman and that, you know, he and his, his members were the, you know, the, 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 you know, the homo novus, the new man, they were the intelligent ones. He also, I have to say, he wrote some very scathing things about uh, Immanuel Kant. He did not like Kant. He did not, he spoke really badly about the enlightenment uh, philosophers who who essentially were responsible for uh, the movement which led to the founding of the United States and sort of new levels of personal freedom and no more uh, sort of hierarchical you know uh, uh, you know kings and queens and running the world and all that kind of stuff and so Scientology it started in America because of the very unique freedoms that America provides and yet Hubbard he was very disdainful of the philosophers who were responsible for creating the atmosphere under which democracy flourished. 
So the answer to that is philosophy is when it benefits him, he's definitely for it. Yeah, so there is uh, philosophy, there is uh, there is some intended humor in this, uh, but it's kind of mocking sardonic humor. It's not like, there's not jokes. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely uh, Hubbard projecting his own psychopathy onto the government to get you to think that he's the good guy. Um, and in terms of what, this is Barb Tree's projection, what are Scientologists allowed to read? <clears throat> well, you know, there's many different levels of that. If you're, uh, if you're, you know, run of the mill public Scientologist, uh, you can pretty much read whatever you want. It could be costly for you. If you read the wrong stuff, you could get pulled into an expensive interrogation. But I don't think they have a problem with people reading about world history and so forth. It's really the conclusions that one makes from that. And they really want you to make the conclusions that Hubbard made about it because, you know. So I think you're referring to the uh, Red Girl says philosoph uh, at Philosophies, um, it would be cool if you scanned and shared that book. How many pages is it approximately? If you're talking about the, uh, are you talking about the book I read earlier? Because that's my book and it is scanned and it's on, um, it's on, uh, Amazon, you can buy it as a Kindle, or you can get it from Apple Books or Google Books or all over the place. The article, uh, I guess I could find it and scan it. I mean, you just heard the whole article. That was not a word was left out. Uh, Shelley says, so Ellerich took every one of these points that he thinks the government is guilty and built, in, built that into Scientology itself classic hypocrite. Yeah, you could go through this whole thing. You could bullet point everything he says bad. Uh, everything he says that the government does that is bad, that is a violation of human rights, that is a violation of civil rights. Uh, and 100% Scientology is guilty of every one of those things. And David Miscavige even more so than Hubbard ever was because he, uh, Miscavige, you know, he incarcerated a lot more people. So yeah, speaking of money handouts, Rev Girl says money handouts like pandemic relief. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I'm like, I'm a big proponent of social services. I think, you know, it makes, uh, I think there's, they've even started to pr pr prove uh, economically that a guaranteed income actually helps the economy. Uh, so the problem is when the, the, you know, money handouts get abused and they end up in the hands of people that don't need it or don't deserve it. Uh, Cause you know, all that money that you hand out to, to, to poor people, it, it uh, theoretically, they just spend it immediately because they're poor, they're not saving it. So it all kind of goes back into the, the economy. Um, but yeah, they, they talk about money handouts and then they, the biggest money handout in America is tax exemption. That in is in essence is a money handout, and Scientology uh, takes advantage of that. So you know, for L. Ron Hubbard to say, you know, that they try to buy people with money handouts is just so much. It's a total lie. Yeah. And Maryland says, yeah, as if Scientologists haven't taken advantage of PPP loans. Yeah, we've we've all heard about the millions and millions of dollars that Scientology organizations took. I mean, they don't even pay their people anyway, so how could they take the money that was supposed to supplant salaries? They don't pay salaries. It was ridiculous. I'm surprised they didn't all go to jail for that. Uh, so, uh, Um, da, 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 da. So Red Girl says, Mitch, no, the Cecil D. DeMille sons. Um, Cecil DeMille, Cecil, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I, I, I know earlier there was a comment that one of the sons of Cecil, Cecil B. DeMille uh, wrote a book, but I'm, I'm not, send me something, you can email me, give me a little more information on that because I'm really, I'm really fascinated. Uh, philosophy says, Rev Girl, I'm really happy you are unpacking it and understanding how it works. It takes time to unpack these things. But what time? It is, uh, it, this is your conversation. You guys have it. I'm not going to interrupt it, but uh, I'm certainly happy you're having it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is Auntie Hajju says, Scientology has certainly benefited from America's free religion stance in the Constitution, has enabled them to gain many more millions compared to if they had to pay taxes. Yeah, this is 100%. This is like so correct. And as I just referred to, this is the big money handout. I mean, this is like, they talk about corporate welfare, which is when corporations end up like paying zero taxes. And you also have this other thing, which is religious welfare, which is Scientology gives nothing back. They take all this money and what do they do with it? They spend a hundred million dollars on a broadcast facility. They keep it running, which even with slave labor, it's got to be really expensive. And they literally give nothing back where, you know, say what you will about the Catholics, they provide a lot of health care. There are religions, you know, I'm not pushing those religions, but they actually do uh, exist to some degree for public benefit. You know, they feed the, you know, I mean, they feed the poor, they heal the sick, you know, they have hospitals and stuff like that. Uh, Barb Trice says, pennies on the dollar, we should all be caring for each other. Yes, we should. I think I've recently realized I'm a proponent of Kant. Yeah, Kant was an interesting guy. I mean, I, 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 one of the last films I did had, I don't remember if there was narration or it was something, a background. There was something Hubbard wrote where he, he made fun of Immanuel Kant. He said, like, Kant can't. You know, he was like, you know, um, and Scientologists refer to him as Immanuel. Sounds like the C word. And so I started reading him. And I was and I was really shocked. I hadn't read Kant since I took philosophy in college. But you read him and you're like, oh, he's describing the freedoms that were then instituted in America, which then led to the religious freedom that allowed Scientology to be born and to, you know, be created. And here is this group that, you know, their leader is like impugning this guy. It makes no sense. But I think I think he hated real philosophers, uh, you know, the ones who had gone down in history for having written some great stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a yes. Uh, Christian B said he's saying this at Love Food Kitchen, but I have to pick this up. That voiceover guy sounds like he's narrating true crime doc documentaries. And yeah, he could. That actor, Shane Johnson, he was, uh, if you ever watched the show, uh, the Black Dynasty show on BET called Power, Shane was, he was like the one white guy on the show. He was the cop. And it was, it was he wasn't narrating a crime show, but he was definitely playing a part in a, in a crime show. But these, that's the intention to make this feel like a legitimate crime show, like, but the crime show, the criminal is the U.S. government. Uh, it, 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 Miscavige was obsessed with finding examples like if you watch, and uh, I did a breakdown with Rachel Hastings of Scientology Media Productions. We showed part of their documentary they made about the broadcast facility. And it's modeled after these shows like uh, Modern Marvels, uh, like these History Channel shows, these Discovery Channel shows. Miscavige was obsessed with, with having people study these shows and break them down on a granular level and then follow them, copy them. So if you look at the Scientology TV channel, it, 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 uh, it mirrors the way a, a uh, um, like a, a network like Discovery or History in terms of its structural uh, scheduling and so forth, which is, that's all uh, organized around advertising because they all show ads. But, and, and Scientology mimics that, the Scientology network mimics that, but they don't sell advertising. So then they have to, the only ads they have on there are for Scientology. So the whole thing just ends up looking really silly. But yeah, to Shane, I, I worked with Shane a lot. I actually was hired him in the, I don't know, mid '90s to play when somebody when he was a never really Scientologist. I mean, he did some Scientology, but I never considered him a Scientologist. Good guy though, Shane. If you're watching this, uh, you should stop working for those people and give me a call. We'll do something. Anyway.
Oh, really? This is interesting. Barb Trice says Cecil, I'm, sh- I'm assuming you mean Cecil Peterbilt, uh, who was, uh, yeah, big Hollywood. We, we all know who he was. Uh, son, his son's, his, uh, Cecil Peter Mill's son was with Illerich when he kidnapped his daughter from her mother. Wow, I had no idea. I guess that he was maybe part of that whole crowd, that whole sort of sex cult crowd that Hubbard was part of, and you know, the JPL uh, crowd. Interesting. I should look into that, dude. I, we should do something on that. Yes, this is true. Uh, Love Who Kitchen says it, Christian B. I guess we should just be grateful it's not Jeff Pomeranz yelling and screeching his way through. The, yeah, that's, that wouldn't work. I mean, Jeff, Jeff did, yeah, for, for those of you who don't know Jeff Pomeranz, he's a longtime Scientologist, he's an actor, he did, did some things in the 80s. He's very much one of these guys who would get a, do a guest appearance on a, on, you know, a Matlock or something with it, with it, with it, uh, you know, an 80s kind of mustache. Famously, Jeff played Jesus uh, in the in a Mormon film that they show up in Salt Lake City. Uh, they have a theater dedicated to the life of Jesus, and Jeff actually played Jesus, which is kind of ironic because Jeff is both a Scientologist and identifies as Jewish. Uh, but yeah, he's the guy who does all the, uh, if you've heard the intro to any of the Scientology events, that really does it. He's, he's like the guy who does the wrestling? Are you ready to rumble? You know that kind of thing. I don't. I don't do impersonations. I, I suck at it. Yeah. Uh, Shelley says, "Don't forget all of those front businesses that Scientology has." Yeah. In addition to all of these kind of writings, I mean, even the this type of writing represents a kind of front group in that it's front. It's journalism that's disguised to be supposedly in the public good because it's not talking about Scientology at all that's then meant to sway your mind about Scientology. I mean, that's how all of, the, all, all of those programs like Criminon, the criminal reform, morals education, uh, Narcan on drug rehab, all of those were started by uh, the Office of Special Affairs predecessor, which is, you know, the uh, the Guardian's office, they were all just meant to soften Scientology's horrific reputation with the public, which has really been that way for a long time. Okay, somebody wants to the other side of life, hashtag Streets LA, big shout out. Uh, to them for the incredible work they're doing. You know, I was, I was, I think I spoke about this yesterday. I've heard, you know, obviously, this is the number one, this is the riz of the anti Scientology movement right now is uh, Streets. Uh, what's his name? Anthony, whatever the work he's doing, which is absolutely incredible. And then somebody pointed out, well, you know, they're doing the work that you ex Scientologists should be doing. That's not really true. Uh, I mean, not, I mean, it, it, not that we shouldn't be doing it, but you know, it's like, what am I going to do? I could go down to an org and stand outside and say, hey, hey, did you just take a course? Did you take a course? Did you see one of my films? You know, my films, they're crap. They're bullshit. I made them. I was deluded. When I, I could do that. And you know, maybe I will. It might be fun. But the thing is, is that when we go down there to do that, they have an instant response, which is, this is a deranged ex-member apostate. But when Streets goes down there and these other guys go down there, I don't care if they're doing it for money, for, you know, shits and giggles, uh, because they, they feel a real sense of social injustice and they want to battle against it. I don't care why they're doing it. It's good work. But it renders the church, the church completely powerless to respond with its usual messaging because they can't say, oh, this is just some disgruntled ex, you know, members that are coming back, whatever, you know, like they're just going whatever. Uh, yeah, they can say they're a bunch of anti-religious bigots, but like, they're, they're not. You know, you it's hard to say that when it's normal, when it's regular citizens, when the when the citizenry starts rising up against you, not your ex-members. That's why it works so well when they do it. And, it, and, and our role is more, let me tell you about Scientology, this is what it looks like from the inside. This is what it looks like when I was so brainwashed and so falsely 
felt that I own, owed them something because I thought they helped me. So big shout out to Streets. Uh, we should definitely support them. Uh, for well, all those groups, I don't remember the names offhand. Uh, you, um, you guys do. It's everywhere. It's all over TikTok. It's all over YouTube. It's huge. It's exploding. And the reason it works so well, I'm just going to say it again, is because it, it's the citizenry. It's not ex-members. Miss Amber Sunshine says, so constitutionally speaking, I should be able to go to organization request a refund of all the monies they have on account for me and at the same time request no further contact from them. Yeah, this is absolutely, you have a right to do that. Uh, they even have a refund policy. I mean, I have, I got to try to figure out a way to get it because I need the money, but I've got like $42,000 on account at the advanced store of Los Angeles and my former wife, when we were married, she put the money down there so, and she doesn't want it. So I've thought about uh, having somebody write a, a letter for me, a, a, an attorney. Um, but yeah, you absolutely have a right to that. Scientology even says you have a right to that, but they're gonna, they're gonna sandbag you trying to get it back. But you should try and get it back. See if you can find an attorney who's willing to write a letter for you and just, you know, and hopefully you have an invoice. I mean, I have an actual invoice. It's gonna be difficult for them to send you uh, documentation, uh, even though legally I believe they're they're obligated to do so. But the thing about requesting no further contact from them, <clears throat> this is a a subject I spoke with Jeffrey Augustine about recently last year, and and I, I need to bug Jeffrey about this because uh, he brought up this really interesting point that if you leave Scientology, if you've signed any of these waivers and you leave Scientology, they can make a point that you're still a member and you're still under the auspices uh, of these, uh, these, you know, these waivers that you had to sign that you wouldn't sue them or that you would abide by the, the, the arbitration rules or whatever. And the only way you can get out of that is you have to officially resign. I don't know if any of you guys saw us do it. We did a stream on that and Jeffrey and I were gonna do a program where we were gonna create a boilerplate letter uh, that you could send out because once you make that formal resignation, that's it. You, they can't mess with, they can't say, uh, you know, you have to come into arbitration, blah, 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 because you are no longer, until you sign that, you are to some degree, they can have some control over you. And I was reminded of this because a friend of mine contacted me recently and they had, they had, they didn't know anything about the thing Jeffrey and I talked about but they had written this letter and they wanted me to see it and it was absolutely perfect. So uh, yes, and I believe if you send that letter uh, and, and Jeffrey and I, we are gonna get together, we're gonna create a boilerplate version of it. If he doesn't wanna do it, I'll just do it. And, and, let's, and I wanna start a campaign where people can actually send in resignation letters. I don't care if you left 20 years ago. I don't care if you left 15, minute, 15 minutes ago. And we can actually start a campaign and, and begin to build a list of not even names. You don't even have to have your name on it, but these are the number of people that have actually sent resignation letters to the Church of Scientology, because I think that would be a, 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 a really viable, a, a, it, it would be a good thing to do. I don't know. My, I did sleep a lot last night. You guys know that I just like them, like I'm the somnambulist from, you know, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. I'm mostly just like sleepwalking. Uh, through life. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Miss Amber Shunson, we're going to get you a template you can follow. Yes, yes, uh, this is, uh, damn. Uh, so, the other side of life says Scientology is a total scam. It is. I, I mean, I refer to it in my book as um, a, perhaps the greatest confidence game in recent history because they have actually figured, uh, Hubbard was so clever, he was such a genius at this, he figured out a way to get people to actually trade their core identity, what is authentic about themselves, to trade that for a false narrative and to actually pay money for that narrative. Uh, and eventually that narrative leads you up to, you know, believing that your body is infested by alien consciousnesses and that you confuse their thoughts and feelings and emotions with your own and that you have to pay lots of money to get rid of them. like that becomes your story and that's a total scam it's like a three-card monte of the mind so yeah it's a total scam 
you know, that's why the other day I heard somebody arguing with somebody on YouTube about referring to Scientology as a religion, and I felt so bad for that guy because that's like saying, that's like saying, you know, Amway is a religion. It's not. It's a scam. Okay, so uh, Duchess Diana says, just came on. What did I miss? Okay, we're going to start over. No, just kidding. Uh, watch the replay. You missed some good stuff, Diana, and it's good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Uh, Auntie Hart, you said, the video seemed very well produced to me. It's only the content of the message that I take exception with. Absolutely. I mean, these are two separate things. Uh, and you have to understand, um, when I started producing work at Gold, <clears throat> and all of a sudden there was this massive upgrade in the quality of the work that David Miscavige one day said to me, you know, it's, he pointed out how important it is that the work that Scientology puts out should should gain, garner respect for Scientology just on the quality of its own and with, forget the message. Like people should look at it. And, you know, we used to get these comments like somebody, you know, uh, this, this quote unquote Super Bowl ad. So I made a bunch of them. They're not Super Bowl ads. They're just ads they show on the Super Bowl. They don't qualify as Super Bowl ads. Super Bowl ad is an ad made just for the Super Bowl. Uh, but th their ads are not. <laughs> their ads are made to show on the Super Bowl and to convince their members that they're expanding and they're sending out messaging to the world and they should give them tons of money. Uh, but yeah, he didn't, he, to him, it was like the medium is the message. It's kind of that old Marshall McLuhan thing, but kind of uh, bastardized so that like, well, look, the work is such high quality. Of course, we're not a cult. So, but you know, it's just BS. I mean, that's just, when I woke up to that whole thing, uh, and I realized I was being like the Lenny Riefenstahl of Scientology. I was like, except unlike her, I'm apologizing. And for those of you who don't know who Lenny Riefenstahl is, she was the famous Nazi propagandist, brilliant filmmaker, uh, proto-feminist, uh, fascist, all kinds of other things. And she never apologized. But I kind of relate to her. And I have some very interesting information about her, which was actually given to me by uh, David Miscavige as a gift. He gifted me a bunch of... Hubbard's correspondence with Lenny Riefenstahl because they knew one another and uh, in 1960 he helped to rewrite a script. So it's a pretty interesting story and uh, I'm not the first one to tell it but I have some real inside information on it and I am going to be doing that at some point. Uh, Selena came or I can never pronounce that name. I'm no, you need to send it to me recorded and I can just hit a button and say it. She says, hey everyone, hello Mr. Brisker. It's past my bedtime but I couldn't sleep so I thought I'd stop by and listen. Well, we're happy to have you here and do try to get some shut eye. She's in Wales for those of you who don't know. We're very happy to uh, have friends in Wales. And uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Yeah, so we're just moving along here. I want to make sure I get all the important stuff. Hey, Apostate Alex is here. Hey, Selena Kramer. We'll take it. Well, that's your communication. I'm not going to interrupt it, but I wanted to say hi, Alex. I just noted you were here. We noticed you were here. And uh, thank you for dropping by because my entire chat perked up when they saw you were in here. But yeah, Alex always makes me, he's a good reason to smile. Uh, what does it say? Ho, ho. The YouTube channel looks like a clown nose on me when Mitch pulls up my comments. <laughs> It does. Look at that. Yeah, well, I, that's nothing I can do about that, Shelly. You're going to have to maybe like, yeah, this this just, you know, it's YouTube. That's how they do it. Uh, what does this one say? This one say, oh, Wexican Messler said to Ed Barbara, John Atek wrote about the kidnapping piece in A Piece of Blue Sky. Yeah, I didn't actually read John Atek's book because I just, when I was going through reading Scientology books, I was only listening to them. I didn't, didn't read any of them. Uh, so, but I probably should because I don't think he's going to do an audiobook. 
I, I'd like to talk to John in, in person sometime about a number of things. Uh, uh, philosophy says, or you could make anti-Scientology propaganda. Wait a minute. So I missed the first part of this. Uh, but yeah, I can. Okay, yeah. Oh, I wondered who does the voice. Uh, philosophy says, I wonder who does, does the voice in the Scientology concerts and the propaganda that they show at them. Uh, well, yeah, at the events, it's Jeff Pomeranz. So Jeff, is an, he's an actor. He did a lot of TV, but mostly he's a reg for the IS. He's also one of these guys that won, you know, the Scientology Olympic medal whatever they call it the, uh, the, the, the the what is it it's called the freedom medal of honor valor whatever you know tom cruise got the big one everybody else gets like an olympic size one jeff won one of those ones i'm not sure for what i think it was for raising more money than anybody else jeff is a noted um registrar fundraiser for the international association of scientologists he's also an actor he also does those vo's and he is uh, essentially a really nice guy he's just lost in a cult uh, but yeah, everybody, everybody doesn't like his voiceover. Sorry, Jeff, if you're listening, everybody thinks they're stupid. Even Miscavige, the number of times he told me I got to get somebody else, but that's, you know, it's like that voice is everybody is pretending that it's okay, but nobody thinks it is. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, spoken by the man who knows apostate Alex says, don't trust apostates, they're full of lies. Yeah, and while we're talking about books, uh, if you go, I'm just going to put this up here. Uh, whoops, uh, da, 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 here, we'll just scroll it for a minute. Uh, man, my mouse, I, I'm losing an ability to use a mouse. Uh, okay, here we go. Hold on, sorry for that. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up for a minute. I want to sell some more merch. I want you guys to buy some more because I think it's really cool. And you can also buy an autograph copy, hardback of my book for 50 bucks plus, uh, plus shipping in the U.S. only. Sorry about that. It's too expensive to ship outside the U.S. Uh, but anyway, I'm, that's my program for raising money to promote the book because I'm really trying to get it more into bookstores. And it's expensive. You have to like either go to book fairs to promote, which is very expensive, or you can, there's kind of some some uh, aggregator people that go to book fairs and you can pay them and they'll show a bunch of books, but it's expensive. So I'm trying to raise money to do that. Um, anyway, so let's get back to enough, enough self-promotion. Uh, yeah, I think I know what you, you know, I've, I've, I've thought about this philosophy and make it all B grade 80s. I have thought about making a parody film that seems like, oh, you know, did you guys, you know, the, uh, the, that movie, The Imposter, no, what was it, the movie, the one that James, the, James Franco did about the really bad actor, I can't think of the name of it, but I've thought about doing something like that, like actually a film that pushed Scientology, but it was just so ridiculous. But it was like done, you know, as a spoof from people who really believed in what the film said. Uh, I just, I wish I had the time and the resources. Hopefully someday I'll do that. Yeah, I think, yeah. So Barb Chai said ATAX was one of the books I read, also Reitman's book, and right now Going Clear. Yeah, I listened to Reitman's book, I listened to Going Clear, both of them were amazing. I thought Mike Rinder's book was also really amazing, really well written. Plus, I love Mike's voice, uh, you know, he, he just, his voice is kind of like soothing. Uh, <clears throat> but also, the, the Bald Faced Messiah is just like, that's the one that really did it for me in terms of understanding L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I miss the snow. Veronica, Bombria, hello. Nice to see you back. Uh, hi, y'all. Snowing in New York. Yeah, well, I'm green with envy. Uh, and uh, Anthony R.R. R. Mills show says, Hi, Mitch, just emailed you concerning your message to me from two days ago. 
great to catch you live. Okay, great. Well, now everybody knows that. Yeah, I'll look at that right after we're off and I'll respond. And thank you very much for emailing me. I love getting email from you guys. Uh, actually, I like getting email from everybody except the, uh, uh, the IRS. Uh, da -da -da -da. So... Barb tries, wants us to know that she has food in the oven and I'm going to pause the video and come back. Mitch, I asked a question earlier. If you get to it, that would be great. I'll try to find it, but you might have to ask it again. Love Food Kitchen says, I find it fascinating that they don't erase people from history like they used to. There are still so many videos, articles on freedom, et cetera, quoting Senior Director Mitch Brisker when he's now an SP. Yeah, I know it's pretty funny. I, I, it's just a different, it's a different, yeah, they don't do that so much anymore. Uh, I think they're, they're gonna, I mean, what are they gonna do? I mean, I'm all over the place. Um, and it's almost like it's a way, I don't know, I think it's a way of messing with me. It's a way of saying, you know what? I did that, okay, are you guys hip to this? I don't know, some of you guys are new, you haven't known me that long, but I wanna just, uh, I wanna just go to my channel real quick, and I want to, uh, hold on a second, let me just do this. Let me, I, there's two videos on my channel that I thought, uh, here we go. Okay, check this out, can you see these two videos? Down here, can you see these down at the bottom right here? There's one, that one, and then that one. Scientology Bound, the true story of Scientology's film studio, Golden Era Productions. That was the first video that I did. Um, and it's kind of rough. It's kind of, uh, the, I think, I, videos in my presentation, but I mean, what I said I think is great. Uh, but if you haven't seen those, go and watch them because this Scientology Bound, it's a, it's a video that I made with gold in 2014, uh, extolling the virtues of gold. And what I didn't know at that time, I found out shortly later, was the whole was in existence. There was about 100 uh, Scientology executives locked up uh, like 100 yards away from where we were shooting this thing. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. The other one is called I Was a Scientology Flying Monkey. Uh, I spoke out against Ron Miscavige Sr. because he was going on the TV news show 2020 on ABC. And so I did a bunch of videos impugning him. It was really the only negative stuff I was ever involved in. But just to hold myself accountable and get the truth out there, I did a reaction video to it. But it, And I thought both of these, my point is, I thought both of these videos, I thought they'd get the videos featuring me taken down no they're like no we're not gonna take it down you can talk about us all we want and we're, we're gonna keep you up there saying these you know what we wanted you to say back then what you wanted to say back then so it's kind of weird um so yeah so uh rev girl so yeah they're not gonna yeah the other my other theory i'll get you rev girl in a second my other theory about why they don't take my stuff down is I think they're trying to keep it quiet from Miscavige. I actually think he doesn't know. I think he would lose his shit if he knew that I had done this because he considered me a friend as of 2018, which was just pure manipulation. I was not buying it at all, but he at least professed to that. And I know they've done no, I've not been fair gamed. I mean, I have this channel, I've written a book. I've been on the two biggest German TV stations, you know, National Enquirer. Chris Cuomo, uh, Daily Mail, uh, in, a, in a week after next, I'm, I'm the uh, 60 Minutes Australia is coming to interview me. So um, nothing, I got one nasty letter from Golden Era Productions from their address out in Gilman Hot Springs, not even through the legal address in Hollywood on Ivar. So I think they, because Miscavige is like, he's so busy, he doesn't like, he doesn't, He's probably heard of Aaron Smith Levin, but he doesn't know that he's like, quote unquote, making short jokes about him on a daily basis. He probably doesn't even care. You, you know, to troll somebody, you have to, you have to insert yourself into their communication. 
Uh, so, you know, I don't think I'm trolling anybody. I'm just trying to talk to you guys and to public who might be interested in knowing more about Scientology. But my point is, I, I think it, they want to keep it because it would, so many people would get in trouble. I mean, I think all of gold would be on beans and rice for six months if Miscavige found out that I was doing this because he, he considers it, that I'm their property. He considers like if Mitch Brisker left and is doing all this, it's because you guys, you know, you must have pissed him off. You didn't handle him right. So I think I think there's a real concerted effort and because I know they're watching because I was speaking to somebody and they figured out I was speaking to them. And then that person called me up and said they just got a call from the head of OSA in Clearwater. And one of the top people in Osa and Clearwater, like an hour after they realized I was talking to them because of something I let slip on YouTube. So I know they're watching. That's intense. Like that, you know, one of the top officials in Osa calls this person an hour after I said something. There's absolutely a guarantee that they are watching closely. But I, but because of the way information is so segmented in Scientology, unless David Miscavige demanded to know, unless he grabbed somebody by the collar and said, what the hell's going on with Mitch Brisker? What is he doing? I haven't heard from him or something. He probably doesn't even know. That's, that's why they're kind of leaving me alone. Plus, I think they know if they did anything. I have more, I have many grounds to, uh, to file a lawsuit against them. Rev girl, I should officially resign. You and me both. I'm going to get this letter together. We're going to put it up. We're going to start like a, like a, like a, you know what we're going to do it like? Okay, so in the 80s, Scientology did the Declaration of Human Rights. Right. Well, that's when they started the International Association of Scientologists. Maybe I can work with uh, Alex if you're listening. He did a thing, the International Association of Suppressive Persons or whatever. And, and the, everybody, what happened, you will resign from the Church of Scientology and then you will sign this, this document, this declaration. And so I think we should all do it. We should all officially resign. So uh, look forward to that. Yeah, anyway, the, yeah, they're not, anyway, we did that. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I did see that video, Mitch. They create a catch-22 for anyone trying to get a refund. Uh, yeah, absolutely, they completely do. No, I mean, it couldn't hurt. Uh, Barb Chai says it, Rev Girl, it couldn't hurt. And it's a great way to make a statement, and, and I just think... Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a fact. Philosophy says, I mean, yeah, he created an effective system for total thought and mind control. He might be evil, but he was really good at it. I think that's one of the reasons in Scientology we think that our cult is better than other cults. Like, you know, I watched uh, The Vow about Nexium, and I'm like, Jesus, how could people follow this guy? Because, you know, I think we all think that our cult, you know, is better than the other cult. But I do have to say, there's a reason why Keith Ranieri is in prison for 120 years, because he was really lazy. He didn't do the work. Uh, you know, uh, Hubbard never went to jail. David Miscavige will probably never go to jail as much as he deserves to. So, uh, yeah, he was really good at it. Re he, because he put the work in, he wasn't lazy. I think Keith Ranieri was the laziest cult leader in history. I mean, that's why he, he ended up, you know, where he is. Uh, so Aaron Hill asks, was that video a revolt or what to do if the government cracks down on them. No, that video was the Church of Scientology posing as a, as a, uh, a socially conscious group, conscious group that exists for the public benefit. Uh, they were pretending, Hubbard, when he wrote that, was pretending to be a whistleblower on, on, on behalf of freedom-loving people. So that's what it was. Uh, Strictly.
Okay, here we go. Rune Sky, Sky Sting said, Yesterday evening was packed with action down at the recruiting office in Hollywood. There was peak Scientology optics when the speed freak made a fool of Scientology. I hope the man gets some real help. Yeah, I'm not sure who you're referring to there, but yeah, I've been trying to keep up on all that. I haven't watched any of it today, so I didn't see what happened uh, last night. But yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, very interesting. Yeah, um, Auntie Hershey, yeah, I do. I, she says you seem to have quite a few followers from e Europe land. I thought it was called EU. Did they change it? It's like Disneyland is Europe land. Yeah, because I, I got a bunch of coverage in uh, on the Daily Mail and on, on two German. You guys have all seen the, the German stuff. It's uh, The German stuff is, uh, um, I re, uh, you've seen these, I re, uh, I uploaded them. They're both on there if you want to watch them. There are these top two things here. More coverage of German television and Scientology is officially considered a cult in Germany if you want to watch those. But I had a lot of people reaching out to me from EU and asking me if I could uh, stream around 2 o'clock because it's a really good time for them. So I'm trying to do that. But I really, really appreciate having uh, subs, uh, you know, followers in EU. Uh, Andy Hajri says, myself included. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Apostate Alex says, uh, you make me smile too, too, Mitch. Yeah, I'm here to make you smile and to embarrass you as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Alex is a flirt. We all, we're all hip to that. We're hip to you, Alex. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the medal, Apostate Alex, thank you for that. He said it's called the Freedom of Valor medal. I can never remember because there's so many, so many statuses in the IS, you know, I just... Yeah, we're, we're uh, Mexican Messler says he's waiting on the audio book. A lot of people are. I'm trying to get it done. It's just, man, it's stressful. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Amber Sunshine says Big Lie is arriving Friday via Amazon. Please don't forget to leave uh, an honest uh, review if you think it deserves one. Uh, da I don't know what uh, philosophy says. Do you like the accent, Mitch? I don't know what accent you're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> it depends. The I like different accents. I like it depends. I don't want to get into that because it, I don't want to say which ones I like because then it's it sort of depends on the person. I really like when a per person speaks with an accent, any accent, but you can understand their English really well because uh, you know they've taken the time to really listen to the language they're speaking. And regardless of having an accent, you can understand that. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, Auntie. But wait a minute, where are you, Auntie Hashi? Because you can buy it like in 20 different countries. So the shipping, you know, unless you wanted an autograph one, but... Uh, you know, if anybody really wants to read my book and they truly can't afford it, uh, I will send you at no charge. I will send you a Kindle because uh, it costs me nothing to do that. And I'd rather you read it uh, than have that barrier. So, oh, you're uh, OK. Yeah, but seriously, you check if it's available in your country. Uh, Philosophy says, Mitch, I got a hard out Kiwi accent. <laughs> accent. Yeah, I actually, I really like the Kiwi accent a lot. I, I think it's, 
it's a little bit softer and friendlier than Australian accent. You're uh, Auntie Harsha, you're a Finlander, right? Uh, I don't know if it's available in Finland. I, it might be if it's if you don't see it on Amazon. I mean, get it as a as a uh, as a Kindle book. There's no charge for shipping. Oh wow, we've gone almost an hour and a half. We're gonna have to wrap this up. Uh, Miss Amber Sunshine says, "Have to agree." Mike Render's voice is soothing, as is yours. Also, Mark Headley's. Yeah, I I listen to Mark's book, and he, I love Mark's voice. You know, I do some streams with him. He has a kind of a fun, fun tough guy voice, like I not like a bully tough guy, but just kind of like he has a voice of like someone you can't mess with, but who's also just really funny. He was like that when he was nineteen when I first met him. He's like so many things about Mark. And Claire are exactly the same, except, of course, without all of the, you know, the stuff that they were, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, they were trapped in a call without all of that stuff. Uh, but don't get me going because they're two of my favorite people. I knew them. I met Mark in 1990. He, he uh, arrived at, at the Int base, the international base, a few months after I did. And then we worked together for years. And then I knew Claire both as a core supervisor at Golden Air Productions and um, as an RTC staff member. And she was one of the not scary RTC staff members. Okay, so let me see. We're going to bring this to a controlled landing here. Oh, well, I'm not sure what this... Miss Amber Sunshine said, I had a friend who was an ex-Scientologist who often referred to flying monkeys and aliens. I never had an opportunity to ask him about the flying monkeys. I don't know why my mic keeps sinking. Um, Hey, there's a chapter in my book called Flying Monkeys. So, but that's more of the pop psychology definition of, you know, narcissistic people. They employ sort of uh, fr friends who are, are under their sort of victim spell and they use them to go speak out for them. So, Miss Gavage has a lot of flying monkeys. Somehow he managed to recruit uh, Marty Rathbun as a flying monkey. Marty, contrary to puppy. Uh, you know, believe he never went back to Scientology. He agreed to be pay a paid flying monkey for a lot of money. Oh, this is a philosophy. Do you find it annoying that many of his people like your country beautiful because of Lord of the Rings? I, how could you? I mean, yeah, anyway, you guys have your conversation about that. But there's uh, actually for me, the the film that established uh, your country as an absolutely uh, just exquisite jewel, uh, both physically and creativity, creatively, was Whale Rider many years ago by, what's her name, Nikki, Nikki, whatever, the, the Kiwi, the, the woman director. I think she's uh, from New Zealand. I don't think she's Australian. Whale Rider was an absolutely one of my favorite films, and that's... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, witness, Mitchie, I think they're overwhelmed. Yeah, I think if you're referring to, to flying monkeys, yeah, they are overwhelmed. Yeah, I think I cleared this up for you, Philosophy. Hey, if you guys go back and watch Whale Rider, uh, what is her name? Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. She re recently did a film, very talented director. Uh <laughs> Shame on you, and inappropriate. There's so many things wrong with the statement, but it really cracks me up. I think DM watches Mitch's channel personally because he misses him so much. Oh yeah, no, he yeah he doesn't. That that would be an emotion that he's in, in, incapable of expressing. Yeah, he, I mean, DM is like, he's not watching this. I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff, I mean, I I was in the room. A lot of this stuff when Anonymous was going on, he wasn't sitting there watching at all. 
he would just get some reports from OSA and he would read the reports. He doesn't want to deal with all that stuff. So, and I think they really are actively trying to keep him from knowing that I'm doing this. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Rick. I hadn't thought of that. Everyone should resign, uh, even the never ends. Yeah, but I, we have to come up with its own category, like, because you can't resign from something that you were never a member of. Uh, so maybe they could resign from the possibility of ever being a member. How would that go? Dear Religious Technology Center, you send it to them and everybody else. This letter to you is to inform you that I am officially resigning from any possibility of ever engaging with your organization. It could be like that. What do you think? But yeah, it would be good to get everybody involved. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, in Quad Cadiz, the video of the monkey is the first I saw on your channel. It's good. So many people can talk now without the continual harassment that critics received some years ago. Yeah, it, it, I think a lot of it is because they're so busy with lawsuits and so forth. That might be the real reason that they're not messing with me. But um, yeah, thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was and it's still up there if you know the, one of the reasons I did that video is because if I googled my name the first thing that came up was Mitch Brisker senior director Golden Air Productions speaks out you know against Ron Miscavige senior and I'm like screw that so now you google my name and that shit's like here I'm going to do it real quick that stuff is like it doesn't even show up on the first page anymore oh no it does yeah they're doing this okay so the number one is News Nation. Ex-Scientologist says church covers up failure of their beliefs. Number two is Ron Miscavige. Uh, uh, Ron Miscavige. And these are not organic search results. These are paid results. So they are actually, it looks like, they are actually paying to keep me in the search result as being part of their organization as speaking out. But right a Above that is the one from the Chris Cuomo show because they're definitely paying for that. You know they pay to get in the in the search results. Uh, uh, Miss Amber Sunshine says, "I'm happy to sign. Can we have a parade? Can I bring my poodles? Absolutely. We're gonna have a. I don't know. Maybe we'll do it on March 13th on Hubbard's birthday or something." Uh, Yes, yes, parades and carnivals, absolutely, okay. Uh, okay, great, we're at an hour and a half, so, uh, you know, I can't, there's no way I can get to all of your comments, all of your questions. Yeah, no, you're absolutely, yeah, uh, witness, wow, see Mitch, they can't keep up with their own outdated tech con configs, yeah, absolutely, they cannot. So uh, Auntie Harshu says, Mitch, do you, do you probably meet, do receive harassment from Scientology now that you're out in public? You speak against it. I think I've explained this. I, I, I absolutely have not. I received this one nasty letter. It wasn't a legal threat. Um, and, you know, so it's like nothing. Hey, Jeffrey Augustine's here. Hey, Jeffrey, if you're still here, I got to talk to you about this. We need to do this thing because a friend of mine reached out to me and who had sent me a letter. I asked her to send it to you too. Maybe you received it. We need to do this program where we get people to resign. So let's work this out and, and we'll get people to sign it like, uh, you know, like a, the Declaration of, of Human Rights or whatever. People will actually sign it. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey says, Scientology Money Project says, past life clears would need to resign from their 1950 status. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a section for past life clears. That's perfect. Uh, and uh, Shelly says, should we all take a trip to New Zealand? That would be epic. Yeah, we absolutely should. Uh, Auntie Harshu, you're welcome. She said, thanks, Mitch, for this great screen. Much, much, much appreciated. Uh, Scientology Money Project says, a mass mutiny. Yeah, we need to, like, you and I need to leave the mutiny. Uh, we need to do it. So listen, I'm going to bring this to a controlled landing for now. I want to do uh, just a little bit of uh, 
uh, shameless self-promotion you've got hold on one second uh let me just stop sucking here okay good so here we've got uh please again i'm asking if you if you would like go to my merch store you can get a book you can buy i think the artwork on my merch is really fantastic uh people seem to really enjoy it uh <clears throat> and let me see what else do we have here if you you can support my journey to hold a scientology accountable you can buy me a coffee which is fantastic or uh you can um even better you can donate directly to my paypal at mitchbrisker at gmail.com that is my personal email so please don't abuse it uh but if it's just scientology business you know anti scientology if it's business of the channel you can also reach me at scientology the big line gmail.com all one word uh and then we have if you have subscribed and you know hit the notification bell and give it a like i really appreciate it thank you very much for doing so uh so that's pretty much that so now i am going to sign off if i can thank you all uh, again and this is the part that i you know that i find the most difficult i'm still sort of new at this apparently it takes a lot more than 110 videos to get good at it but i'm still working on it Anyway, I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna come back later. Hopefully today, uh, I have some really interesting stuff about uh, how Scientology it admits to being an, an extremist organization in its writings, and uh, it admits to it. And I think they're just oblivious to it. So we're gonna do that later. But for now, let's all give a shout out to my little puppy Weston, who's now about to be let out uh, to take a walk and boy does he need it so i'll see you guys later take care <coughs> 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 <coughs>